affirmed. Alidar. Their rivalry is the greatest in the history of the Triple Crown and one of the greatest in the history of sports. Alidar was considered the more physically gifted horse, but affirmed had an indomitable spirit which couldn't be tamed. They first met as two-year-olds in 1977 at the youthful stakes. Affirmed won the race while Alidar finished a distant fifth. I don't think really anybody realized how good the horse was at this point. Um, you know, because he, he, he'd won you know, those races, but, uh, you know, he hadn't been overly impressive. One month later, their rivalry began to develop as Alidar defeated a firm by three and a half lengths in the great American states. Alidar was a horse with uh, so much courage. He kept coming back and he kept trying and... It was made out of iron. A firm displayed the heart of a champion by holding off Alidar in both the Hopeful and the Belmont Futurity Stakes. This thing went on and on and had a lot of twists and turns, so it was fascinating in that respect, but it was also fascinating because they were so close. In the Champagne, Alidar came barreling down the stretch and overtook a firm at the wire. Then, in their last meeting as two-year-olds, a firm beat Alidar by a neck in the Laurel Futurity, giving a firm the honor of two-year-old Colt of the Year and an edge in their matchups four to two. And then they separated. One went to the West Coast and one stayed on the East Coast. And so coming into the Triple Crown, they were like two well-established adversaries that had prepared in different places in different ways. The stage was set. Both horses had gone undefeated since their last meeting in 1977. The anticipation was building as their showdown at the Run for the Roses seemed imminent. Next stop, Churchill Downs. I think most people felt that before that series began that Alidar was the better horse. So I used to tell Velasco, used to ride Alidar. I said, you're going to beat him in the derby because he don't want to go that far. I thought that a firm could not go distant for the simple reason of the style he run. He seemed like he was all out all the time. I was a very young man at the time, my first derby horse, my first triple crown horse. Uh, and it was so exciting. And it, it built as, as, as the days and the weeks went by leading up to the derby and then to the Preakness and then to the Belmont. I went into the derby very confident about my horse, but obviously also I had a lot of respect for Aladar and George Velasquez and the whole team. I knew that, uh, you know, that they were um, a force to be reckoned with, that it wasn't going to be a pushover, and that, uh, you know, we needed to be 100%, and uh, we were. Now, the key to that Triple Crown for me was that Affirmed and Steve Cawthon made this incredible team. He was a good horse to begin with, well-bred and beautifully trained by Laz Barrera, but the secret of that Triple Crown is Steve Cawthon. In 1977, at only 17, Steve Cawthon was named the nation's top rider and the AP Male Athlete of the Year. He had taken the horse racing world by storm and set a record with over $6 million in purses. In 1978, he even released his own biography entitled The Kid. Now The Kid was making his first appearance in the Kentucky Derby. He's moving fast, and down the stretch they come! Photo finish! The number two horse, one of the two favorite horses. We've talked about him throughout the telecast. Affirmed, Mr. and Mrs. Lewis Wolfson, the owners, the wonder boy, the kid, Steve Cawthon, aboard. The horse that's been called a dream horse, a wonder horse by the young jockey, Aladar, the favorite with the whipping, driving, slashing rider, Jorge Velasquez, seeking his first derby win. And now Sensitive Prince gets in the line. They're all ready, and they're up. And on the inside, there goes Raymond Earl, and Affirmed is right there and challenging the three horses. Out in the middle of the track, that's Aesop's foibles into the third spot. Sensitive Prince in the middle of the racetrack moves up as they passes for the first time. It's Raymond Earl now showing the way by a length and three quarters. Affirmed is second from between horses, and there goes Sensitive Prince inching up on the outside. A gap of two and a half lengths. It's Believe It racing fourth. Aesop's Fables is fifth. Chief of Dixieland tucked in on the inside. His sixth fifth point by two lengths. Then Darby Creek Road followed on the inside by Hoist the Silver. Aladar on the extreme outside is next. Then Special Honor Racing 10th and Dr. Valeria is 11th as they move on to the back stretch. And on the outside, there goes Sensitive Prince taking command as Raymond Earl drops back second by four and affirmed his third at this point. The first quarter in 22 and three-fifths seconds and a half in 45 and three. And down the back stretch, 
sensitive Prince now enjoys a two and a half length advantage. Raymond Earl is second by three. Affirmed is third by a length and a quarter. Along the inside, Aesop's foibles is racing fourth. On the outside, that's Believe It now fifth. Gap of two and a half lengths in chief of Dixieland is sixth. Darby Creek Road is seventh. Aladar now on the outside. Gains ground in eighth position as they round the far turn. Three-eighths of a mile ago in this Kentucky Derby. Hit sensitive Prince and up on the outside. There goes a firm with a rush. A firm takes command by ahead. Sensitive Prince is second and believe it moves quickly to the leaders as the field turns for home. Coming to the quarter pole. Affirmed on the inside. Believe it on the outside. Believe it on the outside. Affirmed towards the rail and down the stretch they come. Affirmed on the inside. Takes command again. Believe it is second. Aladar gains ground third. Third in the final furlong. It's affirmed with Stevie Colton showing the way by two and a half. Believe it with Ed Maple is next on the outside. Aladar is third. But it's going to be affirmed. Affirmed with Steve Colton is going to win this 104th running of the Kentucky Derby. Aladar is second. Believe it third. Gap of four lengths followed by Darby Creek Road, Aesop's Fable in the rest. Well, it was a firm stalking the early pace and quickly moving to command and never letting it go. The Kentucky Derby for 1978 is over and there's the winning jockey at age 18, Steve Puffin, born and raised in Walton, Kentucky, has returned to ride affirmed. Wearing number two to victory in the Kentucky Derby, owned by the Harborview Farm, which is owned by Lewis Wilson, and his wife, the daughter of the former great trainer, Hirsch Jacobs. That is the story of a victory for youth. And the derby, my horse was having a hard time to handle the track at the beginning of the race. And it finally got, got, got going, or getting going about the last three-eighths of a mile. And he was too far back. And uh, he still finished closing fast at the end. Uh, and, uh, and that's what made me think that I could beat him next time. It was probably the most pressure I've ever felt in my lifetime uh, in racing, uh, simply because what was on the line, um, because I was the young youngster, and uh, to a certain degree, I think I felt like people were expecting, you know, that if something went wrong, it would probably be my fault, you know, by my making a mistake or something. Now you're down here. Just got to Baltimore this morning. In a matter relatively of minutes, you'll be running in the middle jewel of the Triple Crown, the Preakness. And I know what the press and broadcasters have put you through for the past two weeks since you won the Derby. Try to tell us, if you can, what your emotions are at this very moment. Well, you know, I don't try to, I try not to get too emotional. I try to, when I'm before a race like this, I just want to go out there and do the, ride the best race that I know how to ride, you know, do my job. And uh, I know the horse, I know the people, and, uh... It's been, you know, I mean, there's a lot going on before races like this. Like you said, a lot of press and things, but, you know, it's been all right when I can do it with people like you, and it's a lot easier. Well, you're very kind, Stevie. Final question. Once you told me affirmed as a dream horse, a wonder horse, you still believe that? Is this a truly great horse, and will he win today? Well, I believe he'll win. I hope he will. Well, you know, I mean... Ali Dar is a very tough horse, and he didn't seem to run his race in the Derby. He, I, you know, I expect him to run better, and he's worked differently. You know, it seems like uh, they're doing a few things different. Uh, I expect him to run better, but I, I've got a very good horse here. And like, he is a dream horse, and hopefully I'll win again. He's moving fast, and down the stretch they come! Photo finish! And they're off. They break away. Indigo Star on the outside takes the lead. A firm coming on. Down along the inside, believe it. Moving between horses. Track reward. Four of right there as they come past the stands for the first time. It's a firm on the outside. Track reward along the rail. They might the try. Indigo Star on the outside, believe it. Along the rail. Two lengths back and forth leads. And it's new time fender. Kelly Dar and Jack Test trails. They swing around the clubhouse turn. Track reward along the rail with a slight lead. Affirmed on the outside. They match drives as they go to the back stretch. Down on the inside. Believe it. Racing third. Two lengths back. Then it's noontime. Spender. On the outside. Indigo star. Then it's 
Ali Dar and Dak Seth. They straighten away down the back stretch. Affirmed is taken charge by three parts of the length. Along the inside, Crack Reward. Believe it's coming on third in the outside. Noontime Spender racing fourth. Up on the outside, Ali Dar making a move as they approach the half mile pole. Along the inside, it's Indigo Star and Dak Seth trail. They race on to the half mile pole. It's Affirmed showing the way. The outside, Noontime Spender right there. Believe it. In third place, Ali Dar rests up in the outside. Side. They've got three-eighths of a mile to run. And it's firm holding the lead by a length. Noontime Spender's right there along the rail. Believe it, coming on. Aligar charging up on the outside, making his rush. They come to the top of the stretch. The firm has the lead by a half a length. Aligar's on the outside along the rail. Believe it. They're into the stretch. Three sixteenths of a mile to go. A firm holds that lead. Aligar up on the outside to join the leaders. They come on down to the eighth ball. It's Aligar on the outside. A firm along the rail. Inside the eighth pole, it's a firm holding a slight lead. Heligar is charging at him. Coming on to the 16th pole, it's a firm. Heligar on the outside. They come on down to the finish. A firm and Heligar. Here's the finish. A firm wins it. Heligar is beaten by a neck. Believe it is third. Penn's new time Spender was fourth. Now back to Jim McKay. All right. Affirm, the unofficial winner is just the way they finished in the Derby. Affirm, Alidar, and believe it, still unofficial. The time, 154 and two fifths is only two fifths of a second off the track and stake record set by Canyonero II back in 1971. The face of the kid, the athlete of the year in 77, the biggest story in sports thus far in 78, the winner of the Derby, and now the Preakness, Stevie Cawthon, Congratulations, Stevie. Thank you very much. And there is emotion this time, in your eyes and in that smile. Well, last time there was too, but uh, it's starting to build up into a right. real nice story. I was able to dictate the race and really just sit and wait for Aladar's challenge. And at that point still had, you know, more than enough to, to hold him off. And it was a great race. I mean, we they, the two horses really quickened up tremendously in the last quarter of a mile. You know, but at the same time, I always knew that I had him that day. But my horse was coming on, and he, he had no excuse whatsoever. He was trying his best, and I was trying my best. And, and every time we get beat, uh, go and watch the films and try to come up with some kind of excuse or some error or mistake that I made in the race, and it never happened. I, I, he just kept beating me. Affirmed and Steve Cawthon were now only one victory away from horse racing immortality. However, it's the final leg of the Triple Crown, which is the toughest, the mile and a half at the Belmont Stakes. Although Affirmed had now bested his rival in six of their eight meetings, Aladar's two victories had come at Belmont Park. Entering the race, Affirmed was the favorite, but George Velasquez remained confident of Aladar's chances of winning the race. Definitely at the Belmont Stakes, I say, well, this, this time is a mile and a half. And uh, I'm, I like my chances better than uh, with Alida than, uh, than, than the other races. So now going in a mile and a half, I say, well, I got a good chance to beat him now. Every time that I raced against Eladar, I gained more respect for him. And, and I knew that at that point, the Belmont was you know, going to be tougher. It was probably going to be the toughest race of all. Um, you know, because I knew that we hadn't broken his heart yet. <laughs> He's moving fast, and down the stretch they come! Photo finish! And they're up. That's a firm going out for the lead. Then Judge Advocate Alalidar is away well on the inside. Then Noontime Spender and Darby Creek Road. They move for the first turn. Affirmed has the lead by a half length. Judge Advocate on the outside in second by a half length. Along the rail, it's Alidar in third, followed by Noontime Spender and Darby Creek Road. They move into the turn and Affirmed going along easily on the hand ride. Three quarters of a length. Judge Advocate tucks into second by a head, but Alidar won't settle for that and moves alongside. And it is Alidar who's going up now to challenge that pace. Then it's a gap of three lengths back to Noontime Spender and finally Darby Creek Road. They went the first quarter slow, 25 seconds. They move to the back stretch, affirmed managing the lead by one length. Alidar is a very close second by three quarters. Then Judge Advocate third by a length and a half and Noontime Spender in fourth. Darby Creek Road is six lengths off the pace. 
50 seconds for a half mile. Now we've got a speed duel beginning to develop. On the inside affirmed, on the outside Alidar, and those two are letting out all stops. They're going on out together. Affirmed along the inside, Alidar on the outside. Heads apart as they move down the back stretch. Then they've opened six lengths on Noontime Spender and Judge Advocate, and the trailer is still Darby Creek Road. Three quarters, however, went in 114. The pace is still slow. They're moving into the turn. Affirmed holding ahead in front, and Ali Dar on the outside is challenging again. It's affirmed by ahead on the turn. Ali Dar is second by four and a half. Along the inside, Judge Advocate, Noontime Spender, and Darby Creek Road now beginning to pick up the pace. Three quarters run in 14, a mile in 37 and 2. The pace is increasing as they come to the head of the stretch. It is still affirmed as they come to the quarter pole. He's holding on to a head lead. Alidar is outside of him and challenging that lead. The two are heads apart and Alidar's got a lead. Alidar put ahead in front right in the middle of the stretch. It's Alidar and Affirmed battling back along the inside. We'll test these two to the wire. Affirmed under a left-hand whip. Alidar on the outside driving. Affirmed and Alidar heads apart. Affirmed's got a nose in front as they come on to the wire. At the finish, it's going to be dead tight. Affirmed on it. Second, Steve Felton salutes the crowd. Darby Creek Road in third, Judge Advocate fourth, and Noontime Spender finished fifth in what a stirring stretch battle. They both had their shot at this one during the stretch run. By the time we got to the to the head of the stretch, um, it was very obvious to me that uh, that we were both, you know, that the horse and myself we were going to have to dig. Turning for home, uh, by the 316 pole, I think my horse put a little, you know, like a head, small head in front. And I said, well, uh -huh, I got him this time. I get this sense under my, that my horse was feeling a little bit fatigued. But <clears throat> at the same time, I always knew that he had, a, you know, a ton of heart and that, uh, you know, that he'd give me everything he had. I couldn't get away from him, and I say I don't like this. I'm whipping and driving. I, I even got uh, close to the horse, a friend, you know, very close with Steve. Caught and couldn't hit him right-handed. And I hit him left-handed for the first time, which I think, you know, to him probably made a difference because, simply because I'd never done it, and it was a little bit of a shock to him, and it just made him, you know, wake up for a second, got his head back in front, and, and then the rest was just, you know, his determination and desire. And uh, he beat me a nose, or a big nose, I should say. But uh, hey, there was no mistakes on my part. There was no mistake on the horse. The horse tried his, hard, his best. And John Bish, he did his best. He did a hell of a job. We just couldn't beat our firm. They were both so, such wonderful horses, and they both, every time that they locked horns, put in the performance that was expected of them, never disappointing anybody. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience for me. Uh, I mean, it was a little bit disappointing at the time. And I certainly would have rather won than finishing second in all three. But to be just part of it has been a wonderful memory for me. Every time I think of a great rivalry in horse racing, I think of Affirmed and Alibaba. It was the best. Affirmed and Alidar. In sports, they will be linked forever. Two who push one another to levels of greatness like Ali and Frazier, Magic and Bird, Borg and McEnroe. When it was all over, Affirmed had beaten Alidar in seven of their ten meetings. But in retirement, Alidar proved to be the better stud. He sired 62 stakes winners, 11 champions. Two of his more famous sons included Ali Sheba, an easy goer. Ali Sheba, the winner of the Derby in Preakness in 87. An easy goer who took the Belmont in 89, thwarting Sunday Silence's attempt at the Triple Crown. One final poetic twist. Affirmed and Alidar would later be joined in retirement at Kentucky's Calumet Farms. In fact, they even shared side-by-side -side stalls until Alidar's death in 1990. For everyone here at ESPN Classic, I'm Chris Fowler. Thanks for joining us on Run for the Crown.